Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a VR-first co-op game in which the players have to defuse a bomb. One person is chosen to be the defuser, who is the only one who can see the bomb. The other players are the experts. They are the ones with the defusal manual, but can't see the bomb. The bomb consists of several modules, which have to be solved in order to defuse it. The defusal manual guides the players on how to solve each module. So, the defuser has to describe the bomb to the experts, and the experts have to tell the defuser what to do. The key ingredient to success is communication. Every game starts with a new random set of modules, which we try to replicate as close to the original as possible. To set up a game, all you have to do is to insert the game modules one after another into any slot. Depending on the modules you want to play, you need to set them up beforehand, like the wires module shown here. Modules like the Morse code or the passwords don't need a setup. They will choose a random solution once they turn on. Once all puzzle modules are inserted, you need to put in the battery module, which looks like a placeholder module. The puzzle modules will now turn on, and as soon as they are ready, the respective indicator light will flash red. As soon as all modules are initialized, you can plug in the main module. It will display a greeting and wait approximately 5 seconds. After these 5 seconds, it will start to recognize all modules that you've plugged in and it will display the number of modules it has recognized. The game will then start automatically after 10 more seconds. We built several modules from the original game. Two Simon Says modules. Using a couple of standard decade buttons. Two simple wire modules. To use a wires module, the prepared cables have to be inserted. These cables contain resistors from which the color is determined during the game. Two Morse code modules. One with a control knob and one with a slider. The game uses two buttons instead. We thought these input methods would feel more natural. The manual was also adapted to reflect that change. The entire game is powered by a battery module which is disguised as a placeholder. Two main modules which handle the game logic. For example, it keeps track of how many modules were already solved and how many the player still has to solve. We built one with a custom PCB and one on a perf board. Using perf boards turned out to be very space consuming and error prone, so we designed custom PCBs in a later stage, which worked much better. In fact, putting the circuit on a PCB freed so much space that we could even fit a battery in this main module. 
And finally, two password modules. They would have been very challenging when soldered entirely by hand on a perf board due to the five matrices and their integrated circuits. We learned from building the main module that putting the circuit on a PCB made things much easier. So we decided to design the password module on a PCB right from the start. This is the housing in which the modules are inserted. As you can see, each module is held in place by a magnet. We use magnets that are normally used as a magnetic door catch, which turned out to work pretty well. In fact, as you can see, you can even turn the box upside down and shake it while you're playing. Everything is held in place. If you want to remove a module, for example to reconfigure a game, you have to push them out from the back side of the box using two pins. Every module contains a microcontroller, which is connected to a common data bus as well as a common power supply on the back side of the box. For debugging purposes, there is a wired power adapter, which you can connect to any USB power source. The data bus that the microcontrollers use to talk to each other is called a CAN bus, which stands for Controller Area Network and it's primarily used in the automotive industry. As only four pins of our connectors are used, it would be possible to add other means of communication as well. The microcontrollers we used are particle photon development boards, which are based on the STM32, and they're quite expensive. But in principle, any microcontroller that can be connected to a CAN bus could be used, like the much cheaper ESP32. If you wanted to, you can even build a module with a Raspberry Pi in it. We learned a lot building this project and we hope that you liked it as much as we had fun building it. Goodbye.